Jurassic Park. <laughs> that, that, right? <laughs> um, they do that at each other without making that noise. <clears throat> they jump up and they kick each other like this. And the woman just kept standing in between them. She kept coming, oh, leave it, lads, leave it. <laughs> leave it. <laughs> Taskmaster burst the bar and exists. Split up 10 miles per <laughs> I'm in such a good mood today. That's a good mood. I'm in a good mood as well. Exciting. Are you? Yeah, because QPR bloody well. Ask me a quick. Ask me this, Flav. Is that yeah. a banana in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Ask me that question. Is that a banana in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? It's a banana. Oh. I brought some bananas. <laughs> I brought some bananas up, and then we had a few technical difficulties. So say, and ask me this, because I mean, those of you who've been following the podcast for a long time, Flav has hinted at certain things for for a long, long time. Um, so ask me, is that an apple in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? Is that an apple in your pocket, Jim? Or it you is, it is an apple in, in my pocket. Why have you got fruit in, fruit in your pocket? Well, because we, you know, we really dive into these, you know, it's like an essay almost, this podcast, when we sort of really get into it. So, and you know, I mean, I know it's confusing high. to most people, but even I'm confused now. What is going on? I, well, I came up the stairs and then I, I had some problems, didn't we, with the... So you thought, I'll put the fruit in my pockets rather no, than just well, on the no, table? No, I had a cup of tea in my hand as well. So I'd pop them in before I go up the, the stairs into the west wing, uh, not into the loft. And so I've got to go upstairs. So, and I've been getting told off because I keep um, spilling my tea as I go up the stairs. <laughs> so you can all you should, imagine me getting up the stairs. You, could, you used to do that at Ball Street as well, as you just have a cup of... What was that soup you liked? Mulligani. Mul I don't Mugli. have a cup of it. You're, you're, you're the gammon cup of soup, dude. That's your thing. Don't, don't Why is it Gammon to have your... a cup of soup? It's just, it's just a nightmare to wash. It's... It's... You would leave your cups full of, just... oh, full of soup and then leave them for about three days. We had to have a, I, 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 we, we had to have a word with you, you, Jim. I'm suing you. Look, that's, the, that's, the, that's my lawyer coming round because I'm, I'm, I'm upset. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the J James, what do we call this again? James and Fluff for now podcast. Jaffin. Uh, uh, the Jeff and Podcast. Uh, speaking of that, we will be uh, finding out what our patrons are going to be called. Our patrons are in the chat right now. Welcome all of you. And uh, we had a bit of drama last week as well with the uh, the little, little slug showdown. For those of you who don't know, uh, this is uh, honestly this is a football podcast. We'll be talking about one or two derby games. We're going to be just in time. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, if you're watching today. Don't worry. We've got your back. We're completely behind we, you and we'll tell we you why with some Mangle United. We've got some Mangle United. Liverpool Mangle. cracks all over the place this week as well. Uh, some derby games and just all sorts of nonsense. And reactive clubs as well. And Arteta's God, are we do, Aren't we leaving that now? That's enough now, the reactive I clubs. I feel like this is the last week for sure. Good. I think, and and I think when you hear it, we'll just need I to... I hate it. We, almost, we really need to just, just really like finish it off. Yeah, um, just so, double yeah. tap, back of the head. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, we'll get into it uh, straight away because we think the patron thing we need to sort out. So if you are a patron, welcome. Thank you very much. We did a mailbag earlier in the week, which was actually absolutely brilliant, actually. We did a, uh, there was a great question about the Hunger Games and who would win in the Hunger Games that uh, involved uh, the 20 managers and captains. And we went into that in, in very <laughs> granular detail. Um, and the answer may shock you. And the answer may shock you, exactly. Uh, so if you are a patron, yeah, get in, get involved. But what do we call the patrons? That's the question. Well, they they refer to themselves as the li the little slugs, which <laughs> I'm not comfortable with. But it's, it's, if people don't know, look, this this show is becoming just a series of in jokes, right? And I'm all here, I'm here all for it, right? But people won't know. They feel like we're being calling the people that support the show and enjoy what we do little slugs. <laughs> It's just not the right look, I don't think. I'm not sure it's the right look, I'll be honest. We've got some options, though. You guys got in the comments. Thank you very much for getting the comments. Keep doing it. You guys are amazing. It's so funny reading the comments. Try and get, you know, this is your chance. This is the this is how you become a stand-up, you know? Great comments. And then we go, hang on, this guy's really funny. In you get, you know, sold-out arenas. That's how it works. So we had some options for what we should call our patrons. Uh, if you want to become a patron, link is in the description. Uh, we McSlash said, James and Flav's weird little mates. Is another acceptable collective term for us lot, along with dirty <laughs> little slugs. Powerless said, surely your patrons should be called Jafans. No. Jafans. Didn't like that. No, I, like, I get it, but it's just like, no. I prefer slugs than that. 
Yeah, James, uh, James and Flav community page, uh, which we now know is Louis. Uh, big up the little sl- lil slugs. Uh, all in uh, all in capital letters for the first uh, word of each of those uh, 14 likes. And uh, Danny Lightfoot, the patrons should be called Jaffin Cakes. So Jaffin we don't you can't do polls on YouTube anymore. But maybe we should. Maybe the patrons should should name themselves. I don't know. Like, how, I don't know what the best way to do is. Uh, I mean, I don't think we're going to live right then, now, guys. If you don't know. We're watching the live chat as we record. So if you want to get a part of this, you can join us by uh, what, what's our patron? Patreon dot com. Uh, James and Flav. James and Flav, you can join up for quite an expensive sum of money. Um, don't focus. And on. you can you can get involved. And obviously, as you know, at the end of this podcast, if you're a patron. Uh, or, or a little slug, if, as they keep calling themselves. I'm literally looking at the chat now, and they're saying, up the slugs, afternoon slugs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't choose this slug life. The slug life chose me. So same <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. Look, they can refer to themselves as uh, as they like. Uh, yeah, but at the end of the show, if you are a patron, you get to, to take part in the quiz. Uh, it's called, what would you call it? The, the patron slug, well, quiz. Became, well, it was the patron shame, which is a terrible name, but it's now become yeah. the, uh, the slug showdown. Uh, we had some drama it's... last week because um, they want justice for Rab. Rab took on the quiz last week. And the question that we asked was how many times has, uh, Australia have been at the World Cup? The answer on the website was four. The actual correct answer is five. So is, I don't know if Rab's here today. I'm happy to give Rab another go. I don't think um, he is. I'm not sure he is. But we'll need one of you patrons right at the end of this podcast to be ready. Don't worry. I've got I've got 442 I'm backing on this time. So you know the questions are going to be correct. We're going to be absolutely fine. Really good uh, magazine, this one. This is from just a couple of months ago. Uh, Man United there. And uh, if you go to the, the article on Man United before the season started, the title is this. Hang on. They are the resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk about Man United now? Uh, well, speaking of things backfiring, we'll get to Man United, but I think we've got to do a quote right. of the pod first, which is uh, quite an easy one. Ants, 84, but a lot of you uh, said it as well. I'm pretty sure we'll be fine against Antwerp. <laughs> that was Flav last week before the, uh, hey, the Europa I, League. But I got nightmare. tweeted so much. <laughs> well, I thought the people that watch this, we're supposed to be mates. Like, this is all, we're all in the same boat, aren't we? We're all, we're all pushing towards the same thing, which is our success, my success. I thought we were all working towards that. But apparently not. Apparently, I make a mistake. I get a little bit bold that we and expect us to beat that shitty tin pot city of Antwerp. Not only is the club tin pot, the entire city of Antwerp is tin pot. And if anybody has an issue with that, I'm not sure what you can do. You probably can tweet me some abuse or something like that. But yeah, I, it was literally like everybody. Like I made a mistake. We all made a mistake. <laughs> do you know what I was amazing about it though? Because you went, it's like it's like losing to. Forest Green Rovers, and then someone in the comments went, "We've we've lost to Forest Green Rovers." <laughs> so you called it, you called it before you called it, before calling it wrong, whatever. Yeah, um, no fair play, hands up, I'll take my medicine. I'll say it again in a in a heartbeat. We got Ludo Gretz tonight. Absolutely Easy. no fucking. We are playing Ludo Gretz tonight. Hey, if we mate, don't, off you go. <laughs> if we won't, if we don't win by three goals, I will. What could I do? I'll eat a can of cold baked beans on this podcast next week. Looking forward to it. If we don't win by three goals. Three, goals. Gretz- three goals, that's heavy. I yeah, I'll eat a whole can of baked be- cold baked beans on this podcast next week Next week, if we don't beat him by three goals. Looking forward to it. Okay, we'll soon find out. Three goals. That's sad. He wants a response, doesn't he? He wants a response, does Jose. Uh, Mr. Nathan, Mr. Nathan, Mr. Uh, this was my favourite episode in the light of Spurs' result last night. Even though they ended up with the best midfielder in the world and son on the pitch, I'm sat here with a cup of coffee, crying with laughter. Football is cyclical. The circle of life. A uh, little bit of wisdom there at the end from. Uh, Who's the best Nathan. midfielder in the world? I think you're talking about um, Ndombele. But he didn't play. Oh, he didn't play. <laughs> he didn't play, yeah, so lots. we couldn't win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we were unable to win. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we've gone through, I think. So, what is that? It then? We're, we're called, we call them little. I quite like little slugs. I don't like, like, take the T's out of it. I quite like. What? Well, because it's more it's aggressive. A bit more gangster, isn't it? Like, yeah, well, yeah I'm, I'm a little slug. Whereas I'm a little slug. Just seems a bit more demeaning. I don't know. I mean, again, let us know, in, let us know in the chat. You guys are watching live. Let us know. I think Jaff and Cakes and the other ones, not really upset. Weird little mates is quite good. 
Um, but... If they keep digging me out, I, they will be called slugs forever. Okay. Comment of the week. Kid AAA said, this is the most original football podcast on the internet. Simple sentence, which can be spun however you would like. And I would, I'd be happy to stick with I would agree. I don't think there's many other podcasts like this. And I think that's an important thing we must stick with. Um, is it the best? That's not what he said there. That's not what he said, just to be clear, but it is original. Great. I would say, I would say it's better to be original, but I would also say, I, I like to think about that person who said it's better than the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> I, I keep that, and the True Geordie podcast, I keep that firmly lodged yeah. in my head. I like the idea that he's got like a list, like a top gear list, and he's got all his, all his podcasts there, and then he like, the podcast finishes, you know, we go, um, see you next week, yeah, bye, little slugs. Oh, technical digger for He goes, <laughs> takes it off, pops it at the top, above, above Rogan and Geordie. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> Sam Fenton, new to the pod, and already it's my favourite out there. Watched almost every single one because I have, clearly have no life. I'm weirdly immersed with Flav's sometimes outrageously inappropriate comments about bumming the kids and whatnot. Yet it still somehow provides us with top draw, <laughs> top draw football chat and some of the best podcast segments ever known to man. Shark Facts is something we never thought we needed, but now life would be meaningless without it. That's what gets me so excited about the pod is what is the next bizarre thing that's going to make sense to 5% of the population that we're going to yeah. do on this podcast? Jim, I want to, I, I want to bring on, uh, when we do Shark Facts, I want to bring on Pat Who, one of our patrons, because <laughs> okay. we, we're having a few te technical difficulties. We're having a chat in the Discord <laughs> server, and he gave me a Shark Fact that I didn't yeah. know, which is unbelievable. So yeah. much so it's probably not true, but he reckons it is. So yeah, if we can bring him on during Shark Facts, that'd Absolutely be good. Fine. Absolutely fine. Uh, don't know what, this, uh, this is interesting. Close your eyes and take yourself here, Flav. Okay. Or uh, anyone watching. Don't know, uh, says Liam Wilson. I don't know why, but sometimes Flav gives me flashbacks of going down to Newcastle from Glasgow to be a ball boy in the pissing rain to watch an abysmal Newcastle team get pumped from Pompey and get a lump of half-chewed chewing gum launched in my direction from Sam Allardyce. Great pod, guys. What? Yeah. Uh, I think Me? what he's saying is he likes I look like someone... Use. I think I think that's what he's trying to say. Oh, uh, we got some good calm takes in the comments last week, and I'm happy to. Look, okay. We've got to we've got to keep calm takes alive because there are people out there, you know, not taking this seriously enough. This game of football that we love. Do you know what I mean? You know, we don't. Let's not. It's not the be all and end all. We've got to stay calm, stay away from the hyperbole. Um, more on Ollie out, by the way, before I forget um, in, in, a, in a few minutes. Ryan Maxwell, calm take. Spurs' sublime attack this early in the season is going to be the detriment for the rest of their campaign. Teams are going to prepare and do their homework vigorously and slowly shut them down. Come February, fans will be frustrated that Jose has no plan B. Maybe warmer than a calm take, but I'm claiming it. So he's saying that how, the, the way that you've been uh, attacking recently is going to come back to bite you, Flav. Yeah, I understand, James. I heard it. I listened to it. I understand what he was getting at. Sorry. Move on to the next one. because okay. There's definite sense in what he's just said, and I don't like it. Okay. Uh, Ruben it Green. I get quite... This is good. I quite like this one. I get quite tired of this ever-changing Arsenal narrative. <laughs> I would... James, can I just say, I absolutely love the way you read these questions out. <laughs> really, you really make like it. Jack and Ori. Um, <laughs> uh, I would just like to watch my team play football as any fan, but it goes one of two ways. I just, I can, I can feel his exasperation and I get it. And I think a lot of football fans will, will get how he's feeling it. And I have huge respect for you, Ruben Green. I get quite tired of this ever-changing Arsenal narrative. I would just like to watch my team play football as any fan, but it goes one of two <coughs> ways. Arsenal get a bad result. This means Arsenal fans need to shut up because we are shit over -hype and overhyping Arteta and we won't achieve anything. Arsenal get <coughs> a positive result. This means steel has been added. Arteta has pulled off a masterclass and, of course, Arsenal are in the question. They've just got to improve. What's tiring is pundits and YouTubes, the YouTubers, I guess, Telling Arsenal fans to shut up, stay calm, get behind the manager, stop hyping people up when I just want to watch some football without being treated like I'm deluded just for supporting Arsenal. Love what? the pod still. I think that's such a good comment because I think, I do think about that like with Arsenal. If you, you know, and there's, there's got to be 
hundreds and tens and hundreds of thousands of really nice Arsenal fans out there. And they're just, they're being <coughs> hard. They just, want to watch a, they just want to watch the football. It must get frustrating. It must get frustrating for Arsenal fans. Because as you say, yeah, I mean, look, fundamentally, they're all scum, right? But there probably are some out there. That's like, not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but fundamentally, they're all scum. That was scum. so Trump. That was so... I think what you said... No, I agree with what you're saying. Um, <laughs> I saw no, no. This. Sorry, sorry to get political quickly, but I was just like... Uh, what was it? Um, Trump goes... It's a, this thing's a fraud, right? And and all the newscasters keep going, you know, of course, there's no evidence for this whatsoever. And then Farage comes on and goes, well, you know, I think, you know, fraud, there is, it could be frauded. This is, the fraud is, is you know, something that happens in, in the electorate. Blah, blah, blah. And then the, the, I think it's Andrew Neil said to him, said to him, is there any evidence of fraud? He said, well, no, not yet. And so, <laughs> so then you Why are you talking about it? Then. Oh my God. Um, anyway. Yeah, and I mean, like, they are they are all scum, right? But 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 there are some out there that are probably less scummy than others. And what I would say is it must get fresh, quite frustrating because they do get all tired with the same brush, and it does is the same narrative. The problem is, is that they've they've had their entire they well, most Arsenal fans, and not obviously not that gentleman who left that comment because that was a very good comment. I, I enjoyed it great deal, a great deal. But most of them kind of want, want, you know, they, they've grown up with a lot of success. That we're the best team in the land, and now they, it's quite hard to compute the fact that they're just a normal, average football club like the rest of us. Um, so I, I understand what he's getting at. Like it is, it's either like meltdown or untold glory, and it's because of stuff like Arsenal fan TV, and and you know Hugh Wizzy's reaction to to stuff on the kickoff that gets clipped up, and so it makes all Arsenal fans look like they react that way to a football match when the reality is most of them like all of us we just it's tough if yeah, we they're, lose. Just, they're just you know these guys are you know Wizzy Wizzy knows uh, obviously knows his club and he does his the amazing little streams where he just like goes down little roads and explores things which is interesting but that's you know he's very watchable when he when he loses his shit so but YouTube it's YouTube isn't it's it you YouTube, have to be it's entertainment, ex- isn't it? yeah, yeah. extraordinary in order to stand out what um, I would say for Arsenal fans, I bet they're a little bit frustrated with this, is the fact that I think they can, like you don't like this, but they can see what's kind of happening there. And you saw that in the Arsenal Man United game last uh, week. And what, so I, I think what, a lot of them are like calming down a bit. They are, cal- that, so the oh, Arsenal fans boring, are calmed down and now they, they want the, they don't want to be associated with the way that it was. I think yeah. actually, I think it's, it's Man United at the moment where, there's the there's the flip flopping like at a different level because there's this thing it's all about expectation with Arsenal I don't think there's there isn't the same expectation yet with Man United they've spent a lot of money um, and they got into the Champions League do you, do you see the comments from uh, V S Boas about Champions League he, he's saying that for you to be shit you've got to get into the Champions League to lose those games to have the opportunity to be shit. <laughs> Whereas if you're in the Europa League, I mean, it doesn't really work for Spurs at the moment, but generally, if, you, if you're if you not good enough to get into the Champions League last season, then you don't get the opportunity to lose these Champions League games and there to be an absolute disaster at your football club. You're, you're, you're playing lesser sides in the Europa League and winning those games easily and therefore by being <laughs> by being shit the season before and not good enough to get in the Champions League you end up actually getting better press the next year so true I, I wonder where you were going I didn't really understand any of that until the last <laughs> until go. the last sentence it's interesting. Um, it is interesting and and the bigger you get the more harsh a critic um, and, and for a long time I've always considered success to be and I haven't seen any success, to be fair, but uh, the better your team gets, the worse it is to support. Because it's, 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 it's several levels. The expectation goes up in your fan base, which is always always damaging because the more you expect and hope, the harder it is when you don't achieve it. So that's one part of it. The atmosphere goes because every game is so tense because you realise if you're going for the league, you have to win every game. So there's very few games, unless you're freeing up where you can relax and go, oh, we can start singing and we can just start enjoying the football. No game is enjoyable. When you're chasing for glory, no game is enjoyable until it's done. And that, and, and, and for about an hour afterwards, two hours afterwards, or when you're doing a podcast, that's fun because you're talking about a win. But experiencing that win isn't fun. It's weird. And, and 
and, and then and then you're immediately thinking about the next game because you have to win every game. You can't afford to lose. So there's so much pressure in being successful or, or aim striving for success. I'm not sure it's worth the point, Jim. Yeah. I would in a way, I do miss the days, and I would never go back to them. But you know, just to aid my point, I miss the days a little bit of just you go into each game not knowing what the fuck's gonna happen. And sometimes you win and it's the best day. It's the best day of the month. You get a really good result. It's the best day of the season. But, but becoming better, you don't get that release. You just get an expectation and a, and a frustration if it don't win. It's like some I've, I've gone to games where Spurs are like, when we were chasing Leicester, we were playing Bournemouth and we were 3-0 up. I think we went one and up after the first minute. My feeling at 3-0 was like, oh, thank fuck for that. <sighs> Won that one. Rather than, yeah, it was just, oh, thank God. Really? So, yeah, yeah. Be, be, being a, it's striving for success isn't isn't the be all and end all. Um, and it does create a different kind of kind of fan base and stuff. Mm. Uh, like, how did it feel last night when you beat Derby? Why not? Oh, mate. Right. I'll tell you what, because I tweeted it, I was like, this is excruciatingly boring to watch. Watched uh, Wayne Rooney's uh, Derby County, played against them. He's still got it. He's still got it. It's literally, it's like a spud Who? just rolling about, but then getting on Who? the ball and playing lovely touches and passes. Who? Um, Rooney. Wayne Rooney. It's like a spud rolling about. It's, it's, he's still, he's got a very fat neck. I know he's always had it, but he just sort of mm. slow, someone's slow, every, at the start of every season, someone's going, <laughs> and then walking off. And then letting him have that season. And then they come back, it's, sorry, it's <coughs> just before pre season. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> <laughs> they go away again. He still is got he, it. Um, he still got is he vision. still got it? Yeah. yeah. I think, do you know what? I can see him playing for quite a while just because his pace is completely gone. He's completely. Has it? Yeah. So he's just strolled around in the sort of defensive midfield. Oh, he's sort of. Track, uh, well, he went, is he a track, he, track or twister? He is a bit of a track, track or twister. Yeah. He sort of played a bit like a. Yeah, he kind of roams about a little bit, plays in midfield when he fancies it, plays up top when he fancies it. He's uh, he's he's still very good at that level. Still very very good. What can I ask? Is he a he's a coach there as well, right? I think so. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, Philip Koku is uh, yeah. the manager, and Derby were expected to do quite well this season. And he's he's they've done really badly, and we like we we're not a good team at the moment. We're like they're they're giving it a go, but it's, we're proper we're mid table at best. Yeah. So, uh, so for us to beat them, us nick it at, at the end. Uh, really good um, pun work by the Sky Sports uh, team actually yesterday. Uh, bon uh, B O N N E scored a last minute header, and he said uh, they called it a uh, bonfire night. I thought that was really good, really good work. Yeah, topical as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, no, we won. We won that one. Why are we talking about that? How's that happen? Oh yeah, well yeah, because it was. It was. It was one of those where I was like, this is so horrible to watch. However, we are still drawing nil nil and we could nick it and get it undeservedly and you know fascinating what was, the you know what was perfect my mate yeah. my mate Ozzy, big derby fan uh i saw him at wembley the year we we beat them in the last minute undeservedly and it was right near the end of the game and i, I texted saying are you watching it he said yeah he said yeah god it's not like 2014-15 is it <laughs> and uh <laughs> and literally as he texts me that the cross comes in poof <laughs> <laughs> last minute winner again I mean that's on you mate that's, you've done that um, um, it, was it was interesting ch uh, championship this year isn't it you've got Reading um, who were flying I can't get it lost the last two games I can't get my Reddit I heard around it I don't know yeah I don't understand Brentford will win it Brentford will win it this year what oh, oh they'll win it yeah they will they, they've lost three games in the first they've lost a third of their still games good, already though. they're still good are they yeah, it'll it'll come to be. How's the old uh, that that new striker they got? What's his name? Tony Ivan Tony. Yeah. Yeah, I bet he's I bet he's all right. I think he's... he scored ten already this season or something. What really? Yeah, they just go. Oh well, we'll just find. They just find another one. Find another one. This oh yeah, scored ten in ten. Oh my god. Yeah. And then he'll be bought. That is amazing yeah. football club. Bought for what? Bought, was he, I don't know what he's bought for. Maybe Rob can tell me. But bought for like a certain amount. Will get sold for twenty. And more money gets ploughed into the into the and team. So they're on, still, they're and so on. They've only got seventeen thousand. Why do that? I just don't understand the 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 the, the lack of kind of capitalising on the ability to be petty there with a the stadium that you've got. You got QPR down the road. You hate us. Just get yourself twenty thousand. Get yourself. To, yeah, but just do it. They haven't got twenty thousand fans. They haven't got seventeen thousand fans. So you might as well just do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Down the road, they might. You know, yeah, I do. I admire that level level of pettiness. I do. Uh, let's move forward because. <laughs> I didn't hear that because, like, as we say, Discord uh, yeah. cuts it out. What did you do? One or two derby games this week. All oh, right, right. right. Uh, I, bet there, I bet there is actually. It tends to be. Not everyone got it. Won't get into it too much, but a few people. Um, one person. Oh, I did really enjoy it. Someone said um, <laughs> Southampton, Newcastle, the local derby. <laughs> I was like, That's great. Good. <laughs> um, but no, the uh, someone said. I think it was Ryan, but I think he knew. He knows the truth. He knows what's going on. So I'm not. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not buying anymore. No chance. Well, the uh, thing is, is if you don't get it, there, there's a certain irony in you not getting the fact that they are not getting it on purpose. I've got to say, I mean, you know, I'm gonna let's go behind the uh, the fourth wall here for a second, guys. I always got that they were doing it for a reason, guys. Come on. Oh, so you're you're saying that we didn't get that you didn't get that they didn't get it. Yeah, keep up. It's like Inception. It is. Um, can I just say, can I make a point? Um, if my hands are below and I'm doing this, I'm not masturbating. Confirmed, guys. <laughs> the rumours aren't true. I'm, I'm not masturbating. I mean, I'll tell you, I've got I no mean, issue with that. Some, this, some, this is some hot and steamy, juicy podcast action. No, we no, we no all we all that. we all do it. We all yeah. do it. Apart from Jaffet Tanganga of Spurs, who does not masturbate. <laughs> yeah. Pretty Everybody awesome else watching this. Everybody, actually, do you know what? I, I would, I would predict, I predict, I predict about ninety-five percent of the people watching this have masturbated today. <laughs> oh my god! It's actually my analytics. Actually, I can see it's seventy-five. Actually, it's a bit low. Um, yeah, I mean, and just to be clear, Flav's not saying that you can't. He's just saying that he's not during the podcast. Not right but, now. No, right no. Now. Yeah. No. But yeah, yeah, you know, if they want to. Yeah, crack That's on. Insane. Crack on with it, mate. Enjoy. Self-love is love. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, right. Friday, here are the games this weekend. I'll uh, reveal which ones are Derby games. There's quite a few. Um, Brighton versus Burnley this week. <laughs> Southampton versus Newcastle. Everton versus Man United. Crystal Palace versus Leeds. Chelsea versus Sheffield United. West Ham versus Fulham. West Brom versus Spurs on Sunday. Le- Leicester versus Wolves. Man City, Liverpool and Arsenal. Villa, Flav, what will be the a game that you won't know the score to? It's one screaming out at me. I'll be honest. I, 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 although I do feel like we're following a club round here a little bit. Southampton, Newcastle, oh, interesting. Brighton, and Burnley. Brighton, uh, can I just say, their league position is bullshit. They are such a good side. Such you, a good side. Do you think? Um, here's a question for you. With Brighton, Lamptey, he's good, right? Yes. Yeah, he's good. Is he good? You, oh, he's good, but he's oh, small. He's he, uh, do you, would you put him? The uh, England squad will be announced today. Now. We've got Trippier, we've got Walker, we've got Trent, we've got Wambasaka. <laughs> do we need do we need to give Lamptey a chance in this squad? <laughs> we all dream um, of a team of English right backs. I just think uh, that we are strong at right back. Uh, I think. <laughs> I mean, do you think we've ever been more strong in one position right ever? <laughs> it's amazing. It's crazy. It's just somewhat. There's just like. I reckon there's a gang of co- coaches, right? They're all they all just team up and they meet up uh, when you know when they finish. They meet up at a, a, a cafe off the M4 uh, Fleet Services. Fleet Services. They meet up, right? And they they, <laughs> they, they sit down. Costa Coffee is a good, great service. Fleet Fleet. Um, Costa Coffee, and they just go right. How are we going to develop more right backs? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some crack team meetings. Government grassroots yeah. funds, the bulk of it has gone into <laughs> the future Better of our right, right backs. backs. <laughs> 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 it's, it's unbelievable. Am I missing any? I, I'm, I'm probably missing some players as well. There might be some others. There's probably, um, I don't know. Yes, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe that's it. Um, so I, my, my feeling would be, yeah, to drop, dro- drop, um, drop Trippier for a start. He won't know, but drop him. He likes trips, uh, doesn't he? I know, and, and Trippy is like all all managers would like him. He does his job. He gets on with it. He gives it it all, and that almost makes up, I think, for the managers. Like you know, there are some. Pl- it's like it's, you. I would imagine managers. You get sometimes you get a stick, right? There's some some players they they just keep playing them, 
And as a fan, everyone's got one of those at their club where you just go, how's he keep getting in the team? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Got... What's he got on him? What has he got on him? Everyone, yeah, how's every he... t- who in, let's know in the comments below, the team you support, who is your Dominic Cummings? Who is your right. guy that's clearly got something on the manager and therefore gets to retain his place in the squad and team? Right, ours is Lucas Moura. I, I actually rate him. I think he's all right. But everyone's like, how is he still starting? Do you, um, do you know what it is? It's like when it's not going well, before before someone else addresses it, he goes, Ajax away, eh? <laughs> it's good, isn't it? <laughs> and he's well, living off that. He's living off <coughs> that credit. Um, so I, I would say I would say Lamptey should be given an opportunity. He's clearly, clearly good enough. But we always do this, don't we? We always... There's a, a young player... We played three or four games. It's like, got to get him in the England squad. Have to. Have to get him in the England squad. Let's just let him play for a season without the let fucking pressure and the sticking him in a goldfish bowl. Let him play. Yeah. Uh, just let the kid play. Uh, one of our new patrons, Valentino. One of the best names. I'm thinking of a name my child, Valentino, because it's just great. Uh, ours yeah. is Luka Milivojevic. Uh, Ryan Delaney for uh, Bolton. Cheers, Rob. <laughs> it's good. No, we, we care. <laughs> we care. Uh, um, who, who's Luka Mil- Milivojevic? Who's he DM played for? for What's Palace. It? Takes penalties. All uh, right. Uh, Do you know what I thought was always underrated at Palace? And I think he played elsewhere. Can't remember his fucking name. Australian. Um, yeah, didn't I? Got big. Yeah. I always thought he was class. Every time I watched him, I thought, he is a player, this kid. He's a. I would, you know, if I woke up and had a beard like him, I would just oh, panic. God. I'd be like, I, what panic. is just happening? <laughs> what is, How is, what is that? Going on? What is that? It's amazing. Right, this is quite. This is quite interesting because the the patrons, as we uh, again to to reaffirm, as when we record and we refer to people in the comments. If you're a patron, you can watch us record this live and get involved in the chat. So, in in the in the uh, in the comments, halfway death says Mora for sure is is Spurs's. Uh, yeah, definitely Mora says Andreas Niku. Tom Cribb says John Lundstrom. He's a she- uh, Sheffield United, right? He's come up for your leagues with them, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, and he had, a, he had a really good, uh, he had a great season last year, but maybe he's struggling a bit this year. That's interesting. Um, but I mean, I guess Oli Sack, Oli Sack is Bobby Firmino at the minute. Um, do you drop him? Do you not? Interesting. Cracks, Liverpool cracks. We've got a few of them in a second, so we'll get to that. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cavern loves him because uh, he's Villa. Right, here you go. Double game. Southampton versus Newcastle is the our badges look about twenty years outdated, but modernising badges remains a difficult task in football. Derby, I uh, <laughs> if I was Southampton Newcastle, stay with your badges. They're good badges. Don't spoil it. Just stick with it because people they think they want the kind of bit of branding from it. No, stick with your mm. badge. Drag What's your, the worst badges? Fulham, just off, Fulham, off the top. Fulham, Fulham, Fulham. No, it's not. It's Bournemouth. Earth, Earth, sea crap. It is shit, but Bournemouth is weird. Have you seen? It's a man headering a ball. It's a. It's oh a, yeah, ve- yeah. It's very. It's yeah. a, a what vector image of a man headering a ball. It's very it's, much a. Uh, it's very much a sort of. Um, it's like a coaching academy. Yes. Like. <laughs> right, and, and 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 it's like what I'm. Are you, are you googling it? Yeah. <laughs> it's and the hair. The hair's really long, so it's like a man with long hair. What is that got? To, like, put a foot on it. Yeah. Why is it? It's like he's, it's like he's doing a flick on header at the first post. Yeah, where's that ball going? That's, That's true. going to back stick. That's going back stick. Stick. That is, yeah. They, I think they had a. Is it Fletcher? They had a player called Fletcher who played for them for years and years and years. And I think maybe that's built on him. And he's just flick. That's it. For a team that's supposed to play great football, he's flicking that on. He's definitely flicking that on. He's not flicking he's it definitely. forward. It's either from a corner or he's a, it's a big man, little man. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. How long um, is his hair as well? It's so long, it just goes down to his waist. Yeah, do you think? Do you think it just flicks yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a terrible, terrible logo. It's the worst. I mean, unless it's there's some sort of hidden meaning and it's about, you know, for some sort of charity, then I apologise. But just looking on what it looks like, shit. Uh, yeah. Uh, Matt, and that, got a I don't think you went to hair. That's true, that is true. When you went to Bournemouth, have you, have you ever been to Bournemouth? Uh, yeah, it's lovely. Uh, is it? It's, yeah. an, it's. I mean, it's nice. The, the, town, the, place, the place is nice, Bournemouth, but the actual getting in and out of that ground. Oh, no, I haven't been there. Fucking nightmare. Even if it's the smallest <coughs> smallest stadium on earth. Um, but uh, an absolute nightmare to get away. Anyway. Uh, Pat Dobson's also got balls, one for Newcastle. Is the, uh, it's the do our legendary... Stri- <laughs> I thought this was quite good. Uh, Southampton versus Newcastle is the do our legendary ex-strikers count as trophies, Darby? <laughs> So, uh, I guess Letizia and Shearer, isn't it? 
like they they sort of they yeah they'll crowbar them into a conversation as much as possible because that uh, yeah they're, they're, uh, He's uh, Letitia is a good follower on Twitter. Comes up with some mental shit. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, he's offensive at times. Uh, right, Ali, my boy Ali, uh, one of the Orca Ultras. Uh, West Ham versus Fulham is the hand derby. It's simple, but I like that. He said, "I'm so sorry." No, it is. It's it's a what, hand derby. It, There's also the where, what is the other hand derby though, Fav? Um, Old Ham. <laughs> Oh, oh Ham good. West Ham. Good, good, good. Versus Will Ham. But surely they should have replaced Ham with some sort of something else. It's like he's over egging the pudding a bit. Mm, egg and Ham. You're <laughs> loving this, isn't it? In our race for you, for you to overtake me on Twitter, you love this because people just re- it's really good engagement for your for you, isn't it? It's a great tweet, yeah. Well, um, I can I do it next week and get some of that sweet yeah, engagement. Yep, yeah, if you want to. No, sure. fuck off, fuck off, Jim. <laughs> Christopher Quinn was on fire with the derbies this week. I thought he did superbly. Well done. Um, but I'm sorry. Slightly uh, confused by his profile pic, which is just a picture of a cow's face. Anyway, um, <laughs> Wolves versus Leicester is the. Uh, there's two for. Oh uh, yeah, Wolves versus Leicester is the. We're good, but are we good? And which one of us is better? Oh, we'll take a draw. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Who is better, Wolves or Leicester, Flav? In your Leicester. in your opinion, you think Leicester? Yeah, Leicester at this stage. I think Wolves are going through. Um... The, Wolves well, had a good Jota. start, though, mate. They've had a good start. No, no. What I'm saying, I'm saying they, they've lost Jota. I was, I was processing. As you asked me, what happened in my brain, right, right, Jim? Is oh shit, I don't know what to say. Let me formulate something and just any anything that comes out that'll be a placeholder for my actual thoughts. Yeah. that are going to come. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, know, they've Mid- lost Midlands Club, you know, and they and, and the guys, you know, they're playing in orange. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're good manager, aren't they? Good that spirit. Down, 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 down there at Mon- Fan- <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic scouting network. Uh, you know, they're, they're transfer Portuguese, policies. Portuguese, Portuguese, Portuguese players. <laughs> Portuguese players all over the place, Jim. You know? Um, you know? Yes. You know, so, uh, you know, they've very, lost. Um, Sol Campbell's massive for that. So watch Next oh, time you watch Sol Campbell. I'm, I won't. Initially, I was like, initially, I was like, you know, come on. You know, let's 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 give him a chance here. Because I had been a bit sort of confused by what he was saying at times. Moron. Forget well, the first next, stuff. Him, mor- next time you see him, he goes... He'll go, so hang on, let me pick a club. So ask, ask, ask me a question about any Premier League club. Uh, what do you think of Southampton's European title credentials? Mm. Yeah, well, you know Southampton. You know, of course, you know got Hassan Hootel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Austrian. And, uh... He's Austrian, and 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 they're playing football. You know, and they're they're playing home, they're playing away, and you know they're winning some. And they, you know, at the moment they're winning more than they're <laughs> they're losing. Um, and you know you have got Danny Ings up top. Uh, of course, and he's scoring goals, which is important. <laughs> um, you know, if, if they carry this on, I think if they, there's no reason if they carry on winning games that they'll get into Europe. Thanks, Sol. <laughs> you said nothing. Um, and, and and it's and it's weird because like, what's he doing there? Why do they keep ha- having him on? But like, what is he doing there? Because what he, has he I done? He, he, I don't know. Well, he's had an amazing career as a player. Um, that's fine, but he, he's clear he's over and over again that he doesn't know what he's talking about, and he's bordering on stupid. He's, well, so everything I said, up. everything I said there. If you took that, if he said that, these are all these are all facts. Playing they're with all facts. they're playing with eleven. Sometimes it's not sometimes punditry it's though, up. is it? Just just <laughs> listing things that are true. Um, anyway, uh, that, you, Wolves have lost Jota, and I was like, is that a is that a Liverpool level sign in these fucking yeah. class? Um, so they've lost him. They've lost him, Docky, who, uh, who um, you know, hasn't started incredibly well at Spurs, but was a massively important player for for Wolves. So you know, yeah, he's brought yeah, Semedo. Semedo's really Semedo's. Well, for the That's a mad good... signing, isn't it? Like, why didn't we buy him? You know why we didn't <laughs> buy him? Because Levy won't Levy. I mean, sorry, uh, Jose Mourinho will not sign a player under six foot four if he has a chance. Why do you think that is? When's the last time you ever bought a little player? Did you tell me? Uh, I don't Never. Know. He doesn't. He doesn't. He just likes massive squads, like physically massive. Although that said, I think there should be a limit to how tall a player can be because we played Brighton last last week. They have got about four players all over six foot six. They've got to make up for Lampy there, haven't they? That's true. He is a midget. So, yeah, well, I mean, how much? You, like, here's a question for you: How much will Lampy go for next summer? Because he'll be bought by someone. I think. How, what will he cost? I think he's worth. 
He's getting towards 30, isn't he? Only, yeah, because you just look at his potential. You think, right, he's still rough. He's still raw. You know, he doesn't always make the best decision. And in his passing at times against Spurs was a little bit sloppy. But the minute he got the ball, you're like, fuck, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. He's, and he'll play, Jim. And he'll win. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think at the moment, I can see him going for 30 to 40 million in the summer, just based on the first seven games that I've seen thus far. Good. Uh, Bulls Leicester, of course, is also, thanks for this, Clancy, is the glorified dog derby at 2 p.m. on Sunday, which I think is bang on. Wolves and foxes get a lot more glamour uh, than their dog counterparts. It's Christopher Quinn back again. Spurs versus West Brom is the two crap birds having a fight over a nappy derby. You've got the. Uh... I take, I'll take an exception to that, Christopher, because I own chickens, and uh, they're not crap. They're lovely little things. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I've got I've got two. I don't know if this is interesting. I've got three Polish frizzles. If you Google Polish frizzles, you'll see what wonderful little chickens they are. They look like they've got an afro haircut. Uh, you know, you know, Khabib. The MMA fighter. Yeah. That's what when he wears his hat, that's what uh that's what Polish frizzle chicken looks like. Right, we've got two two girls and two boys. You see him? Very yeah. fancy. Very fancy. They are very fancy. And the, the, the two boys were having a right go at each other this morning, like kicking the shit out of each other like that. What they do is they flare up. They're not like that that mon- you know like that monster, the, the dinosaur in, in Jurassic Park. Goes, <laughs> that, that, <right? laughs> um <laughs> They do that at each other without making that noise. <clears throat> they jump up and they kick each other like this. And the woman just kept standing in between them. Just kept coming. Oh, believe it, lads. Leave it. <laughs> leave it. Oh, no, no. Right? Leave it, Terry. Go... ain't worth it. Exactly that way, but as a chicken. Mm. And um, it was just, it was wonderful. Like the boys go, come on in. Come on. If I come on, come on in. And she's going, leave it. Just leave it, guy. Can we just leave it? Oh, fucking mug, mug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You better walk away. You yeah, walk, walk away, away. fucking <laughs> you little mug. You little mug. You're a nonce. Um, where were we? Crystal Palace leads the lovable granddad manager derby. Thanks to Jack Johnson there. Jack Johnson, the uh, the singer, the folk singer there, getting in touch. Thank you. Uh, Crystal Thank Palace you, leads is the lovable Love granddad manager. Who would you rather have you as your granddad? Let us know in the uh, chat. Um, I'm gonna go with Hodgson. Because Ooh. I think he's a bit more he's a, he's a bit more chatty. I think he's he's whereas I Beyonce, think... you kind of like you feel intimidated. And it's a stink of whiskey and fags. Bielsa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Smith, our boy Smith. Smith indeed. Smashed it this week with the derbies. Arsenal versus Villa is the easiest to find in the sticker book derby. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Smith. Very good. Great work from Smith there. He loves his sticker books. Did, uh, did ask him. Yeah, he did. He's, um, I think tw- on two occasions, I think he's tried to start a series about sticker book stuff. <laughs> people he's just not like, game, are yeah, they? They're not game. Okay, they just get no, 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 no. Get on the road again. Um, yeah, unfortunately, but it's I do you, it. Smith, you've well, it. do you think like do you sometimes get hamstrung by the content you produce because there's shit that people like oh, and they definitely. don't want you to do anything else other than that? Definitely. Yeah, we mm. you know we had that with Bull Street, didn't we? I have that with my channel as well. The problem with bullshit is they didn't like any of the stuff we produced. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Everton vs. Man United. <laughs> Turn Easter. Is uh, our big money signings still aren't good enough? Are they? <laughs> are they? Question mark, sorry. Uh, Derby. Uh, and Dave Muchacho is the Everton vs. Man United. Is the Rooney's brain is melting as he screams in the mirror. Derby. <laughs> he's, got, he's got to pick a side, but he doesn't know which one to go for. Well, I'd, love to know, I'd love to get the he, honest he, answer on Rooney there. Does he choose Everton? Does he choose Man, Man United? No, of course he doesn't, Man United. He he, cho- he chose his Man United. He spent, he, he literally, the first chance, the first sniff of a move out of Everton, he took it. Scumbag. But if you played but, for if you played for Norwich for, for 10 years and then, but you were Spurs fans before that, and then Spurs play Norwich. Who are you going with? What? He's he's an Everton fan, isn't he, Rooney? If I if I was a Spurs Spurs player player. So, no no no, and... no no wait. You're a Spurs fan. You're you. You're you. Okay? Yes yes. You're a Spurs yes. fan, but then yeah. you you don't make it at Spurs. You get uh you get plucked by Norwich City. You play spend ten years at Norwich, and then your your career ends. And now Spurs are playing Norwich. 
And 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 James Alcott goes, Flav, of course, you're a big fan of Spurs as a child. Not the same, is it, though? It's exactly the same. It's no, it exactly isn't. It's the same. It, Who are you choosing? Who are Rooney you choosing? didn't... Spurs. Tottenham. Ro- Rooney, Rooney didn't not make it at Everton, did he? It was a better club came along. He was like, oh, that's... I don't want to play Everton anymore. I want to play for them. You do the I'm going to play for them week. now. <laughs> I'm going to play there because that's Manchester United. Forget <laughs> everything that you taught. Oh, a bigger cup. That bigger cup. It's like going out with a missus that you love. And then with a second, like a new, like his fit bird comes along and, and, and like you just leave your missus. Do you? Is that what kind of person you are, James? Go and tell, go and tell your wife right now if that's the kind of person you are, James. Because I'm not sure, mate. If we can have a relationship anymore, if that's the way you think, oh, I'm just if you think it's all right, just willy nilly to fuck off to the next bit of pretty piece of meat. What, you were like this with Ben Haynes. You were like this with Ben Haynes because he's good looking, right? And he's charming and he's fucking brilliant, isn't he? I love him. Yeah. The minute you got an opportunity, you was gone. But who's you, come you back? Chats, Who came calling back, James? You came calling you back to, to you me. You to Ben Haynes more than I do. If you want to open it, he's just such a nice guy, though, isn't he? He's just so nice. He's so handsome. Uh, (laughs) I've got, I I tell you what, I I would consider Ben Haynes could be a potential mate, right? Could be. And if so, I'm probably, I'd have two really good looking mates than you two. That's great. Yeah. uh, (laughs) Yeah, thank you. I mean, and I I agree. I think Ben's very good. So if you ever, if you ever, if if you ever, um, you know, if your marriage splits up and you need to go out on the pool, Ben Haynes is your man. I don't take Ben Haynes. No chance. I'm not. Well, because you all get the, you won't get the you pick of the bunch. Slightly less attractive than you, but with, but but but, <laughs> but louder. <laughs> so they so... can do the hard way. You go. I'm so sorry about this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did for about six seven years. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about my mate. So sorry. He is. He, I mean, he's, he's a nice a... guy. No, he is a really nice guy. But mate, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> touch, hey. uh, do you want to drink? Uh, drink? We've got birds in that later, actually. By the way, so we should we should press on. Because uh, we're giving free advice there for, um, before well, Ben's in that, which is dangerous. Uh, anyway, so Man United, let's do this. Man Glue United. So, <laughs> I uh, here it is. Uh, Tom Dudley. I love this Ollie in stance. Such a change of point of view to take. Look forward to see how your defence goes during the season. Of course, we made our final decision on Solskjaer. And, and, and we are backing back Ollie. We are behind Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer. Man Glue United, they've got to stick together. Uh, this was, of course, after the Leipzig fight. <coughs> again. Flav said, we've got to stop with the flip-flopping. We've got to back the guy. He's earned it now. <coughs> There's no way of turning back from here. Something's happening. It's a really exciting t- time for the for the club. What goes and happens? They lose to Arsenal. They lose to Istanbul Bezek Sahir with the likes of Demba Bar playing up front. Yep, he's still playing. And and Raphael, the former... And Skirtle, I think, was playing for them as well. Maybe. Um, the Resurrection, says Rob Turner. That's correct. Um, I, I almost want to read this out because it's... Because uh, it might help. Maybe it will help with some of the uh, the, the glue that we need to, to get Man United back on track. Um, McSlash did uh, put one in here. So if you are a Man United fan or if you're not, you're trying to... Let, let's, let's stick behind the manager. Let's stick behind him. Um... And get your uh, get your sort of uh, Mangle United takes in there. McSlash said, in their last two Champions League matches, this is before the last one which they lost, Man United have defeated the current leaders of both the French League and the Bundesliga. Additionally, well-respected pundits James Alker and Flav Bateman have officially deemed OGS to be well good. So there's there's one. Um, I would say, I'd like to, you can go after me, Flav. I'll, I'll go. Okay. Ollie's. I think people are looking at this wrong with Oli. I think, I, I see this as an opportunity. Um, and, and I think, look, he's trying, he's trying different things at the moment, and he's been able to do that because of the great victories against PSG and uh, Leipzig. Of course, that's you know that's a team that finished in the final, we finished in the semi final <coughs> last year. Solskjaer is a you know is a is a he's a he's a mastermind when it comes to management. So much so that us laymans we can't understand the tactical nuances of what he's trying to do by leaving Van der Beek out the side most weeks. Um, but. Mm. In time, we will catch up to him. I think that's what we've got to remember. We need to catch up to to Oli because he's, um, you know, the, these are the moments. And I think really what he's doing here is he's testing his squad. He's testing his squad to go, who are the guys that are going to take me right to the top with this club? Because I, I, 
I I expect to be given the backing long term because why wouldn't I? Because I've not put foot wrong with the money that I've spent. Although I have spent eight hundred million, and I am in that period of time since Solskjaer has been manager, I've actually got two more wins than Crystal Palace in that time. I mean, that's not. Is that what are you doing? Sorry, uh, sorry, I just sneaked off there at the end. No, no, but but importantly, I think being fifteenth at this stage of the season is just a really great springboard for the rest of the season. Do you agree? Yes. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer shits on you. Yeah. Shits on your opinions. Just, he shits on you, right? So just give him a break. He's called, um, you know, some have described him as a stern-faced assassin. Yeah. Uh, you know, Donny, you know, Donny van der Beek's there, if he fancies using him. Uh, Doesn't need him. Doesn't yeah. need him. Is there any like any more big ballsy manager? Like he's got balls the size of fucking squash balls, right? Yeah, I think. Look for me. Balls, hey, who 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 signs a player of his of his quality and just thinks your place for me, mate, is on the bench? Mm. We've just spent forty million. Go and sit on the bench. Yeah, that is big ball. That's what you want from your manager: leadership. Big fat hairy balls. I'd just like to read this for you. Just remember that Ole Gunnar, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is taking Manchester United towards the light. <laughs> but his improving Reds face a huge task to restore former glory. So let's remember that. It's, you know, it's a huge task, but Ole's the man. 442, here's from key figures and club moles to get the inside track on their quest to overhaul Liverpool and noisy neighbours City once more. He'll figure it out. Just give him a second. Everyone needs to Give calm him. down. It'd be absolutely fine. You watch. You watch them you watch. pump Everton this week. Watch. Watch well, it. Everton, where everyone's back in. Everyone thinks that, you know, this Everton side is something special. <coughs> they haven't they haven't they haven't taken on the might of Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's Must, must be tough for must be tough for an Everton fan currently, isn't it? Because I was convinced that they were the real deal. And it appears they aren't they aren't. <laughs> it's a light and it's a it's, light squad, I would say. It's a light It's squad. so it's, it, you know, I don't want to turn on them too quick. Because I, I, you know, out of all the other clubs in the league, I feel closest to Everton than any other, right? Obviously, up in Spurs. But if, if, if in this weird parallel in the universe, the Tottenham didn't exist, I think Everton, I can see myself supporting a team like Everton because they're just similar to Tottenham, right? Um, so they're just four on the bounce. They're playing great football and they lose James and it just all goes tits up, significantly tits up, not. Not sort of, not just, not little tits, just big old wangies, wangers <laughs> up in the air, big old yeah. mum tits. And then they've dead, but they've paused in the air, and you're not sure when they're going to drop. So you're just like in this constant state of tension. Um, yeah. um so I think I, I, I'm intrigued. I, I don't want to say it, but I, I kind of think Everton might win this weekend. Um, just no, and actually, forget that. Forget Ollie's at the wheel. It's fine. It's can we? Uh, all right. Well, uh, Pochettino, just before we start recording, um, reported by the Manchester Evening News that, that, that Man United have made an approach for him. Um, I would really, really, really wouldn't like that to happen. It's like, it's like your dad leaving home, and um, he's got, yeah, he's got, a, he's got a new, he's got a new wife who, and they live in a bigger house. Although actually, your yeah. house is quite new as well. So it's, I wouldn't worry too no, much. they live in a bigger house. And the you know she's got a history <clears throat> of um, being very sexually adventurous, and all of that wonderful knowledge that she's occurred in her head will be given forth to you. Okay. Does that work? Uh, not sure. Not sure it does. Not sure it does actually. Um, yeah, and yeah, no, I'll be really gutted. I'll be gutted. I'll be gutted. I'll be gutted. He, 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 I just want him to go PSG. Fucking will they sack Tuchel? He's shit, right? You can't. They, they, they've been awful this season. They can't afford to keep being abject and boring. Get in your pro- previous captain. He's free. Take him right now. Do not want Man United. Is he going to go in there? What's he going to do? What's he going to do with that mess? What's he going to do with that? He's going to improve them. That's what he's going to do. He definitely would improve them. Definitely. It's a good move for him as well. Like It makes sense. It yeah, makes complete sense. It's a step up for him, isn't it, as well? What, what do you mean, step up? From what? <laughs> Just now, one, yeah. what, no, um, what are you talking about? Well, it's a big club. In what way? They've got in more money, way. is that it? In every way. Not in every way. Yeah. Stadium's bigger. Um, they've got more money. 
They're 15th in the league. Commercially bigger. Yep, 15, yeah, true. But can I just say something? If, and this is exactly where Spurs start to fuck things up, but if we manage to beat West Brom at the weekend, guess where we'll be in the league, Jim? Top? Go second. Say it. Don't act like you don't know. We top, top of the league. Top of the league. Okay. Yep, that is true. Well, as long as Liverpool don't win. And they would play their well, game. we played before them, so top of the league. Right, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, oh, exciting. Uh, wow. Rob Turner makes a great point here. He says, Oli has the answers, them. he just can't communicate them. And that's the team's problem for not being on his level. I agree, that's, that's what we're trying to get at. Rob uh, also supports Bolton. That's true. A bit of knowledge. <laughs> see, see, Flav really gets to know his patrons. I love the patrons, they're my favourites. Exactly. Um, not as rosy uh, <laughs> over on Merseyside for poor old Liverpool. Uh, Man United, of course, really on the cusp of something. On a quest, you might say, or 4 4 2 might say. To, uh, to do something really special as they look to overhaul Liverpool and Manchester City and the two take on each other this weekend and it's not looking good for Liverpool at the moment. They are struggling. Cracks everywhere as they uh, currently sit top of the Premier League with 16 points uh, despite the injuries that they've got. Uh, here's a couple of Liverpool cracks. Well, actually, this is more of a, a, an exploration of what Liverpool cracks are. So for those of you who don't know, um, we're trying to make the... Premier League a bit more even uh, thus we're trying to take Liverpool down a peg or two because they're a bit too good Jake yeah. says this it's not bullying to pick on the hardest kid in school no no it ain't but if you wait till his dad's just been made redundant Van Dijk injured and his mum's just died 7-2 versus Ooh. Villa to go at the tough guy it makes you a bit of a shallow person in my eyes yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah AXZ60 hashtag Liverpool cracks not sure who uh, AZ supports or AX supports, but he does say this. Liverpool is the nerdy nice kid at school. You and your friends bullied. You bump into him in a pub 15 years on and you see him with a worldy and a nice body. The worst thing is that he is still nice to you, knowing full well he is better than you in every way, shape and form. It's, um, that's how you beat him. If you're ever getting bullied, that's how you beat him. Is the next time you see each other, you're like, you're nice. Pleasant. Pleasant to them. They uh, didn't get to you, did they? They yeah. couldn't keep the kid down. Don't worry, guys. I know these don't sound like cracks, but here it comes. Charlie Peach. Yeah. The true Liverpool cracks is the way Klopp hasn't been seen without a baseball cap on in months. Is he turning into the German Tony Pulis? If so, will they cracks. please take Ben Teke back? <laughs> Um, I don't. I can't see that happening because they've got a lot of uh, exciting talent. They've brought Jota in. He's banging in the goals, and poor Firmino. He's uh, he's under pressure. He's under the pressure. good, you know, the only good thing, the good thing about Liverpool being so good, is the fans. I hate them less now. Mm-hmm. I, I hate them. I used to absolutely. I've made it clear many times in the pod. This isn't new news. I used to absolutely love Liverpool fans. I thought they were fucking so irritating. But because they're so <laughs> that's, good, that's nearly it. I was like, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> because they're so good now, it's almost they've got bored of talking about their own club. They'll talk about it to each other, but they, we, I don't, they, there used to be this lad in the, in the WhatsApp group. And he, oh God, they, when they were in the ascendancy, he used to give us so much stick and he'd really wind me up. I was just fucking, just shut fuck off. Um, but now they're so good, they don't bother anymore, <laughs> which is in a way a bit sad. But also like, I can't, I don't got no issue with them. Like, Enjoy your success. That's where I'm at now. Okay. Think. Well, like, yeah, I guess they've, they've kind of not the worst. Well, it's done. You've lost, and you lost the you've lost that fight. Of the, like, yeah, they, they won. won the and... yet. they've won everything. So it's fine. Yeah. Uh, right. Reactive clubs. <laughs> it's a big last one. one. It's a big one. Last one. Uh, yep. Yeah, so enjoy it, guys. We gave it a go, uh, but I do feel like this uh, might well be coming to an end. Uh, of course, you've got the periodic table here. There it is, in all its glory. Um, we've done a few over the over the weeks. And we've given it a bloody good go. Um, but Boron last week was was a, was a low point. Uh, and we finish off with Carbon. Carbon will be the last one this week. We'll see if they're good enough. I'll put them in. If they're not, it will be the end of the periodic table of elements slash clubs. Uh, for those of you wondering what Carbon is, uh, it's... Uh, it's the 15 most abundant element in the Earth's crust and the fourth most abundant element in the universe by mass after hydrogen, helium and oxygen. Of course, I think we've done hydrogen and helium. 
Carbon's abundance. So I think that's the key word here when you're describing a club that's carbon. Uh, its unique diversity of organic compounds and its unusual ability to form polymers at te the temperatures commonly encountered on Earth enables this element to serve as a common element of all known life. It is the second most abundant element in the human body by mass. The atoms of carbon can bond together in diverse ways, resulting in various allotropes of carbon. So yeah, like I said, you know, if you want to keep this alive, then good luck. Um, someone in the chat just says, Flav just literally yawned. Um, so the last one, boron, which is ironic, isn't it? Because I think we're all bored. And, Stop this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, boron was last week's one. Uh, and this uh, this yeah. thing highlights the intelligence of the uh, of the guys in the chat. And I'm not saying I'm more intelligent. I'm just saying this is a bad bit and we need to stop it now. Um, James and Flag community page. Boron has bore in the name and so has to be Burnley for me. It's just a boring club. Um, not the nuance we were looking for. Uh, Hope lad, you know, doubles up on this. Boron, boring, Burnley. Um, we had a yeah. couple of proper ones, aka the producer. Boring is Newcastle because no one really cares about it. The owners are nuts and they are a stable Premier League side. Boring element, boring club. Um, I, I honestly can't be asked to read the other two. <laughs> <laughs> that so isn't a good sign. Newcastle wins. And uh, we say goodbye to the periodic table and we move on with our lives with a spring in our step. Oh, shit. Uh, gaffers, gaffs, Arteta. So for those of you who don't know and somehow stayed this long in the podcast. <laughs> oh, I thought you fell over there. Uh, I put, basically put my feet on a box when I'm recording. I was doing stuff and I've just fucked the box up so much that all the shit just fell over my feet. Oh Never mind. <laughs> uh, gaffers, gaffs, uh, we ask you to furnish a living room of a Premier League manager. Last week we asked you about Arteta. This week, Luke Jarvis, sorry, said in the comments last week, we need a Harry Redknapp manager's gaff. Uh, so Harry Redknapp is the manager's gaff. Uh, what kind of living room do they have? Let us know. Paint that picture. And um, we had loads last week, but one was really long. So I'm just going to read the long one, which is from Ollie. Ollie Sack. Uh, Go on. Okay. Oh, what? Big, big, big. The big dead. sack. Yeah, who's actually sack. pronounced Sage, which is an absolute the big, bombshell. Not anymore. Uh, yeah, true. Uh, the entrance into Arteta's flat is a revolving door, brown of oak with a large gold push bar. In entering the apartment complex, you are greeted by a doorman with a green velvet uniform embossed with a golden A on the chest where the heart is. The doorman Norman, the doorman's called Norman, uh, always smiles at Mikel as he enters after his morning run and hands him a copy of the day's Guardian with a double espresso coffee as he makes his way into the elevator up to his apartment. The particular apartment that Arteta calls home is on the top floor with a large panoramic window from which Mikhail can gaze at the London skyline. The large black wood door at the front of the apartment has a great gold handle which, open, which only opens when the fob on his keys is touched against the pad. On entrance into the apartment, you walk down a long corridor in which large paintings of modern art, which might be perceived as squiggles on a large white canvas to the untrained eye. Once you reach the end of the corridor, you arrive at the kitchen living area of the apartment. The colour theme of the entire room is a charcoal grey with not a lot of character, but to Mikel, it feels homely in its simplicity. The middle of the kitchen has an island with three large vintage bulbs hanging over the top and three bar stools behind it. All the furnishings of the kitchen are a very dark, glossy wood. Uh, there is a, not a handle in sight. The kitchen only features essential items, a black Nespresso machine, a salt and pepper grinder, both black and electric. Drawers with uh, one set of cutlery, one set of crockery hidden in the cupboard, one mug, one cup, and a single sink with no washing up left. He never hosts guests here, so why would he need anything more? The lounge is also in the vicinity of the kitchen. A large wolfskin rug is at the centre of the room, topped with a coffee table of two layers. On the top layer, there sits an empty fruit bowl, and underneath there are a few coffee table books, and all black of colour and all of topic of modern art and photography. The sofa is long and dark, open at the end, and doesn't look at, at or feel comfortable at all. The back is too low and the one arm too square, but this doesn't bother Mikhail, as he doesn't often sit there anyway. In the corner section of the panoramic window sits an armchair, not anything too fancy, but again, simple in design. A walnut coffee table rests next to the chair on which Mikhail rests his crisp Sauvignon Blanc in a thin-edged wine glass whilst he sits and reads in the armchair, but, uh, armchair, book lit purely by the large lamp which resembles a larger version of the one from the Pixar logo. Here Arteta reads until he has finished sipping his wine, 
after a long hard day of teaching Louise to defend, then takes himself to bed. And that's Arteta's gaff. Uh, Arteta only has sex in doggy style position. <laughs> I tried to go with that, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> he he right. literally just like <gasps> <laughs> that's it. He won't will not will not do anything else but that. Twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Good effort. Yeah. Uh home wins. Charlie Peach. Don't worry, it's not too long. Uh, Charlie Peach said, can we do a call for old time's sake for any home wins since you mercil- mercilessly dropped it off the running order? So if anyone has had some home wins, we could swap that in for reactive uh, clubs because uh, enough is enough. Um, we've got the Little Slug Showdown, by the way, in a minute. Who's going to come on the uh, Little Slug Showdown? Reveal yourself yeah. in the chat. We'll get you involved. Who? What is the score? I mean, at least... What Part of me thinks you start again. <laughs> okay, let's start again. Start again. Uh, what, what is the prize, Jim? Uh, anything you want, uh, which is interesting. Uh, hang on. Quickly, firstly, birds and that, because we promised on Patreon that we do birds and that. So Sonny has asked this, Flav. One of my favourite bits... Well, what is birds and that? What is birds and that? People so don't bir- know. Birds and that, for those who don't know, is basically Flame's advice. So you've got any got any lady trouble? Get in touch. Me and uh, Flav will sort you out. Uh, one of my favourite bits we'll uh, you guys ever did was Birds and That, so I'm, I'm going to try and rekindle the Birds and That. And by the way, for those of you thinking, Birds and That, are we sure we can talk like that anymore? Well, don't worry, we've already run it by our Queen, Catherine, Queen of the Patrons, and uh, she has said it's fine. No, she didn't say it's fine, she said it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. Doesn't mean it's Rebs fine, though, does it? Yeah. It doesn't mean it's fine. Birds and That's fine. Just for the record, I'm the one that has a slight issue with it. James okay. is fine with it. I think it's okay. All right, okay. Uh, okay. At uni... Uh, I'm firmly stuck in the friend zone with this bird way out of my league. She says the other people, uh, she, other pe- she says to other people how much she loves me and how funny I am, which makes me think there's a chance. I live in uni hall, so lockdown two uh, is obviously now uh, happening and I've got all yeah. the time in the world to graft. And if there was ever a chance now is the time to strike. In a non-creepy you, way. He does yeah. say that. He does say that himself. Yeah. How do I climb it, out that, that dark pit <laughs> that is the friend zone, boys? Flav. Uh, just to caveat that, Catherine says, don't blame me if someone moans. No, we Catherine, will blame you. We will, we, blame you. We, we will blame you. It will be your fault. Um, so, uh, you, you, the, oh, it's, oh, it's very simple advice and you will get your answer uh, very quickly. Um, you just say to her, look, I really, really fancy you. Just, do you want to bang? <laughs> but he's got That's the it. chance to play the long game here. But what long game? The longer he plays it, the more in the friend zone he gets. No, no, no. no. That's where you're wrong. That's where is you're it? wrong. Now, Sonny, well, you've been in the friend zone a few times. I mean, This is the thing. I don't know. I've never been in it. Sure. You've got my... Uh, what I'm saying is you can you can take your time, but it has to move forward. You cannot stand still. Two very different things here. I think with this with this situation happening, you know, the fact that he's going to be in a confined space with her for a long period of time, he's got a chance. But he's got to be careful because he thinks he's in. He's, I think already from this, he says he needs. He's he's in the friend zone because he's looking to climb out of that dark pit. So Could he's he, already. But what does he go out and ask, ask directly, Jim? Do you say, look, I, do you know, I, I, I quite like you. Uh, when this is all over, can we can we go for a drink? Is it something like that, or do you do you do be more subtle? I think because well, got, the problem you, the problem you've got with it is he can't like the obvious thing that you normally do is like you know it's like house parties and things like that. But I wonder if in lockdown too, if they're all stuck in halls, are they allowed to do little house parties? No, they get fined ten grand. Right. See, that's tricky. Um, they can go for a walk. <laughs> what, what legally can he do to get himself out of the friend zone? Uh, go for a walk. Uh, yeah, for but walk. you're not even really allowed out, aren't you? I think you're allowed to exercise. Yeah, yeah, you can go for a walk. You're allowed to go for a walk. But what? What the thing is, he's in there, isn't he? He's in there, and and the and and she has him there because that's she. she 
probably just thinks he's a really nice bloke, right? And she gets a lot from their relationship on a platonic level. I um, think we've got. I think we've got time to listen to the people on this one, and it will really right. much, you know, like the election itself. Uh, I'm going to call myself Biden. You could be Trump. Uh, that it really is dividing the nation. By nation, I mean the patrons, because some are saying, uh, "Flav's nailed it." There says Matty. Dennis says, "I agree with Jim, a thousand percent." So I think we leave this for a week. And we've, because we've got a difficult set of circumstances here, let's root for Sonny, let's invest in Sonny, let's listen to the people, let's find a way to get around this so he can get claw himself out of the dark pit that is the friend zone. Do you know what this reminds me of a little bit? What? Bagel girl. Bagel guy, yeah. Bagel guy. Although it was a bagel girl, wasn't it, as well? So sorry, I didn't, that was pedantic. Yeah, that's right. Uh, bagel girl, this is a similar situation when we used to do this on one for the weekend where ba there was a guy who, who fell in love with a bagel girl. And um, it was a long-running saga. It really was. That, you know, we're still not sure if it's true or not. I, I'm 100 percent sure he made it all up. But but that's uh, that, that it's one of those. So yeah, what what is your advice? Um, in our instance, my advice right now would be just to grab the ball by the horns, so to speak, and um, and just uh, and talk to him and say, look, she fancy going out for a drink when. That's what you have to say. You don't have to, you don't have to put it all out there. You don't have to go balls out. Definitely don't go literally balls out. Um, and just say, gee, gee, you know, when this is over, do you fancy getting a drink together one one time? And the problem is, you're in the you're in the bubble together for the next four weeks. So if she says no, it's like <laughs> you're so awkward, isn't it? Maybe wait till the last week. Cook yeah. a dinner, what, and, and you, you just... can't like you can't interact with them, so you're kind of wasting your time a little bit here. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you might, mean, you if you of... you're better off, ah, you're better off waiting. But you know what, you're going to be waiting for months and months and months. Like, how do you move it forward? It's very. This is difficult because you can't. You can't do any kind of... There's no physical contact. Do you, know, do you know what it is? Yeah, they can have physical contact. Can they? Right. Like, we need to know the rules. Sonny, tell no, I think you can. I, I think you can. I think you can... Um, I think get drunk. Just you two. Get drunk. Watch a film together in bed. Not like in, in bed, but just lie on the bed. And if something happens there, if she fancies two you, something no, would say, You know, safely, of course. Two metres away. No, they're fine if they live in the same house. Okay. I, I need to know that before I, I give my advice. But who cares? Who cares? What like if you if you're eighteen, nineteen, and you're horned up, do you, would you go hold on? There is a corona, there is a pandemic, or do you just get on with it? You get on with it. That's what happens. <laughs> just you. Um, no, you can do you can do stuff just two meters away from each other. <laughs> what would you do? I mean, it'd be weird. It'd be weird. Self love is what it's self love. Do self love that. is love. Yeah. Um. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Just just yeah. Do that. Get, get, just get you two. Just you two. Don't initiate it because I, I think it should be up to her to decide what, you know, especially, you know, it's important that you don't put it on her and if, unless you're hundred percent sure. So wait for her to do it. If she does it and it might be like just a little glance in your eye, it might be like a little glance in your eye across the dinner table, like something like that. It could be something as subtle as that. Bob, Bobby Turner brush... with a great, great idea here, Flav. Mm. He says, uh, is she? Yeah. Well, I don't know if, he's, if it's a question, but I'm creating the question from it. Is um, do they uh, do they share a kitchen? Do they, do, do you they. share a kitchen? Because that could be that could be a route. That could be a route where you could you know you could you could make a meal together. You know, fancy making? I'll make you dinner. Come in. You know? That's good. I'll make you dinner. You eat together, and you just you can you can you can suggest what your intention is. Without actually saying it, that's actually cooler. I think that that will go down better. Hold her gaze. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Hold her gaze. That's it. Yeah. Just if you've, if you've like... watched, you know, you're a patron, Sonny. So yeah, exactly. That's just like this. Yeah. Just stare at her like this when she comes in. She gets up in the morning. And she's, you know, making scrambled eggs. Yeah. Stare. Eye contact, crucial. Seriously got... though, if, you, if just a little bit of eye contact, a little extended, like a little bit, just like a couple of seconds, three seconds, and look away. Okay. Uh, right, it's time for the Little Slug Showdown. Lil, Lil, hang on. Let me just take the tease out of that. It. Let me get the tease out. The Lil Slug Showdown. Um, who, Who's coming in? Pat, who? The Sugar Paddy's here. Yeah, I think Sam said he had a, he had a work call. Okay. All sugar right, no sugar problem. Paddy, are you up for the challenge? Yeah, sure. Good man. What do you um, call him? Sugar Paddy. Yeah, because he gifts, he's an he's a absolute hero. Let me just thank what you. Are you Pat, you've got the money for this. Uh, no comment. No comment. Turn your radio down, Pat. All right, let me find this quiz. Hi. 
You got to turn your stream off. It is. Good. Okay, good, good, good. Right. Pat Who 68 one of our beloved patrons. Um, it's time for the Little Slug Showdown. You, of course, are a little slug. Um, what sure is that? Today. You... <laughs> does it does seem aggressive, doesn't it? As a little slug, um, you, uh, you qualify I'm not comfortable to be in the that. Little Slug Showdown. Um, I'm not comfortable either, I've got to be honest. But anyway, we, we, we'll press on. Uh, exciting times here, actually. I've got a couple of comments on this just before we uh, crack on. Um, first of all, um, Rab, we'll get you back on. The question was wrong last week. We apologise. Um, Josh says this, the idea for Little Slug's Showdown prize, you can ask for anything, which we've yeah. established in the last few weeks. But yeah. if you ask for something that's not possible for you to get, then they get nothing. Oh, so so where do you go? <laughs> How high do you go? Yes. So you have to balance your your request. Go big That's... and risk getting nothing, or go smaller and guarantee it's yours. As long Wonderful. as you and Flav promise you'll try your best to get it. Also, introduce the patrons like Kenneth William can carry on. Go, cool. ooh, patron, showing your age there. All right, listen, listen, James. That is such a good idea. I swear to God, if you. If you come in with a request that's just right, yeah, I'll pay for it. We'll we, definitely pay for it. We'll pay for it. We'll go half each. We'll pay for it. Hundred percent. I'm intrigued. It's, you've got to just pitch it just right. Yeah. Are, are you, you going to ask for two? That's fascinating. I can't wait for that. Okay, right. Uh, the way it works is you've got you can ask the chat. Uh, that's one of your lifeline lines, and you can pass, and you can ask Flav. Those are your three, Pat. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Wonderful. Um, I think I've got the answers here. Good, good. So we're going to four four two because we have problems with the uh, website. Um, Flav, are you ready? I'm ready. Pat, are you ready? Yes. And Pat, where are you? Where are you calling from today? Uh, oh, New Jersey. Sunny oh. New Jersey, of course. And here we go. Um, Biden fan, Trump fan. Trump. Biden. Biden yeah. Fuck Biden. off, Flav. Yeah. I, was... <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Class. Right. Uh, here we go. Against which club? Did Barcelona boss and ex-defender Ronald Koeman smash his famous 1992 European Cup final winner? Against which team did he do that? Against which team, yeah. So this might be... I don't know if Flav thinks he knows this one or if the chat... Might, obviously, you're not looking at the chat pack because you're keeping the integrity of the little slugs showdown high. Of course, I'm on, I'm on Discord. Don't worry. Good man. Okay. Um, you like? So you, yeah, you can pass. You can ask Flav. You can use the chat, or you can just give it a bloody go. I think I will use the chat. He's going to use the chat. Okay. Um, so in the chat now, uh, if you think you know the answer to this one, I did know the answer to this one. I'm pretty proud of that. Did uh, you? I did. Uh, so yeah. So um, get in the chat and, and say, and then Pat, you can now look at that chat. And mm -hmm. pick pick one of the, we have, the people. Can we have yes, the question European again? Cup final. So just say again, against which club did Barcelona boss and ex defender Ronald Koeman smash his famous nineteen ninety two European Cup final winner? Uh, it was it was at Wembley. To give you an extra clue, it's not really a clue, but it's just me showing off. Tension is palpable right now. I'm sure there's people watching this after the fact, screaming. Rob Turner's jumped uh... in. Rob turn so yeah, it looks like Sam Dorian. What do you reckon any of these have Googled it by any chance? I wonder. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I backed them. I backed them. So yeah, would you they're, they're all saying Sam Dorian at the moment. Is that what you'd like yeah, to go with? It'd be very rogue if you didn't. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> okay, that is the correct answer. Well done to you. You've got to show Flav, can you just keep a score here? That's one. That's one, yeah. Question well, let me write that down in case I forget it. In which season? This is tough. This is tough. Uh, actually, I'm going to skip on one. West Brom, <laughs> West Brom tied up a permanent deal for winger Matias Pereira from which team this summer? Little slug showdown. Do you have to uh, do have to push you, mate? Matias Pereira. Um... Signed for West Brom, but from which team in the summer? Of course, he was on loan for a season. Again, from that same club. I'll pass. He's passed. He's passed. Okay, okay, okay. Question three. Which substitute hit the winning goal as Sevilla beat Manchester United 2-1 
in last terms Europa League semi-finals. If I can give you a bit of help here, I would say don't ask Flav about this one. Yeah, I wasn't going to. <laughs> I also um, wasn't listening to the question. Good. <laughs> uh, I'll go Ever Benega. That's incorrect, I'm afraid. It's Luke de Jong. Luke de Jong. What a shame. Okay. What a shame. One. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Pat. Should we should start making this a bit easier. Me, that tie, easier. That ties me with Rob Turner, though, right? Can't be that ties no, me with Rob Turner, though, right? Sorry, Pat, what are you saying? That ties me with Rob Turner, though. That ties you with your joint. Yeah, you're right up there. Well, no, I'll I think we're... Are we starting again? I don't know. Maybe we're starting again. I mean, regardless, we hope as this... As the Little Slug showdown progresses, we'll get higher than one. Uh, at some point but uh yeah uh thanks for that pat <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh pat before you go you um we i was speaking to pat before we started um oh, yeah. can we just quickly move to shark facts so, so go. That... that is it you know we are done now apart from maybe shark facts so yeah we'll finish with pat shark fact go for it all right well flav you uh questioned the validity of this fact so i did look it up okay good and i'll, I'll read the whole entire thing that says okay. so it says Sharks are older than trees. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Sharks have existed for more than 40, 450 million years, whereas the earliest tree lived around 350 million years ago. <laughs> not only, Not only are sharks older than trees, but they are also one of the only animals to have survived four of the five mass extinctions. Well done, sharks. Well done, sharks. Well, uh, let's have three cheers for sharks. Three cheers for sharks. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Sharks, you heard it here first, guys. What a perfect way to end it. Thank you, Pat. Free. Superb work. Sharks Free. are Free. older than trees. Um, Pat, are you still there? Thank you. Thank you. No, are you I still tried. there, Pat? Yeah, I'm here. Um, listen, mate. Um, can I just ask how you, as an American fan, how you ended up listening to this pod? <laughs> watching a pod um ball street i just watched you guys on ball street and i think there was like a thumbnail to one of the long long uh the one for the weekends that piqued my interest so whoever made the thumbnail congrats to you well done. uh probably yeah, g jim nice. probably yeah uh, all right right uh the great facts great way to end the pod uh, thank you everyone get involved in the chat Get those comments in there. Obviously, makes the podcast every week. If you want to join us as a patron and join us live each week, you can do as well. And get yourself in the Lil Slug Showdown. Um, I'm still coming back next week. Uh, have a great weekend, everyone, and uh, of course, patrons as well. We'll see you next week for the mailbag and for the patron uh, and for the podcast next week. Uh, see you later. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye.